Hey everyone, uh, as you all start to file in, my name is Bart Jeppa. I've uh, been working with Picmonic for about a year now. Uh, I'm a med student, currently in my fifth year of studying, uh, and I've been working with Picmonic for a while. I first started using it when I started prepping for my USMLE Step 1. Uh, I used it for some of those real tough glycogen storage disorders, and nowadays I'm starting to prep for USMLE Step 2, and I've been using it quite a bit with Anki, uh, trying to make those key integrations and kind of put things together. So uh, if at any point you guys have questions, we're going to run this like a bit of a QA. and I'm going to do a seminar first, kind of tell you guys what I got going on uh, with all of these uh, tech tips and tricks. And then at the very end, I'll try to an uh, answer as many questions as I can from you guys. Uh, and now just by virtue of RSVPing to this event and being here today, uh, you are entered in order to win one free year of Picmonic. So uh, stick around until the end, because if we call your name and you're not here, you're going to have to pick somebody else, but I'm sure you will be. So uh, stick around. And for that as well, uh, people who, for everybody else, there's going to be a special promotion as well for you. Uh, this presentation is going to be recorded and available on YouTube and available on our blog as well. Uh, and yeah, so it, it seems like we're leveling out now. One more time, my name is Bart Jeppa, and I'm a med student in my fifth year. And today I want to talk to all of you about different high-tech ways that you can boost your studying and uh, kind of make, uh, bring it to the next level, right? Uh, ways that you can use your computer in a way other than you know, Facebook, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Help yourself out. Uh, and the first thing I want to talk about is Anki, which I have, you know, anyone will tell you, anyone who knows me, I have a lot of experience with this, uh, with this application. It, it's amazing. Like, it's a flashcard application. If you haven't started studying for step one, uh, you probably haven't heard of it yet, uh, but it's starting to make the rounds. So you, if you haven't, you should definitely check it out. Uh, the Anki shtick is that uh, you create flashcards, and then based on how many consecutive days you get the flashcards correct, uh, it shows you, it doesn't, uh, those flashcards won't come up again, right? It gives you X amount to do per day, uh, and cards that you've gone correct on successive days won't show up for additional days, right? So if you know, if you know some information like the back of your hand, the app's not going to ask you about it. But if you're having a lot of trouble with something, uh, it's going to ask you about it more and more often, uh, which is honestly incredible. Because uh, I know for myself and a lot of others, there's this problem whereby you kind of forget what you've forgotten, if you know what I mean, right? So uh, some, it just makes sense that if you forget a topic, you can also forget to review it. You know, if your notes aren't comprehensive enough or uh, it just escapes your mind. Uh, and with Anki, something like that, you... You don't have to. Uh, that kind of stuff's not going to happen. Uh, however, uh, which is this is not to say it doesn't have pitfalls, right? One of the one of the big problems with Anki that I've found is if you try to use it as a primary learning resource, uh, you could kind of run into problems because you can learn facts almost in isolation and fail to integrate and kind of make them whole. Which, uh, which can be a problem, right? If you learn five symptoms of a disease by themselves, and then on a test, you get a question about the pathophysiology, uh, where, where they like describe the symptoms to you, you might have some trouble putting all that stuff together and kind of pulling from your memory banks. Uh, so I would recommend when using Anki to kind of use a primary learning resource first. However, uh, one thing that we at Picmonic have been working on for a little while now uh, is this Anki add-on whereby you'll be in your flashcards, right? And if you install this add-on, which is free, uh, it'll show you uh, keywords, right? So for example, if you have a uh, the name of a disease or a drug or a symptom within your pre-existing flashcards, uh, you can hover over it, it'll be highlighted, and it'll link you to a corresponding Picmonic, which is just crazy. You know, it's... Uh, just from there for free, you can access uh, fact lists, you can access a whole repository of information, which can really, really help uh, when you're trying to learn a topic. Even I would even say with this that you could use it as a primary learning resource, uh, which is 
honestly really good. I mean, even myself, I've been using this for my upcoming neurology exam, not even for step two, but just for this neurology exam, which, and it's, it's super useful, right? If I forget, okay, wait, you know, what's the, what's one of the side effects of carbamazepine? Oh, okay. Yeah. I can just hover over it and, uh, within the card and see it. It's really great. I, I can highly recommend that. Uh, number two, the second thing we're going to talk about are 3D atlases. Uh, and these have become especially useful uh, during this pandemic, uh, which is real incredible. Uh, so with 3D atlases, uh, you are able to, instead of a traditional atlas, right, where you just see a 2D representation of a 3D object, which is to say the body, uh, you can actually view it in 3D and view these structural relationships as they appear in real life. Uh, I know for myself and many other med students, one of the biggest difficulties when transitioning into first year and learning anatomy is figuring out, okay, you know, it looks like this on the page and, you know, it's all nicely colored, nerves are yellow, uh, veins are blue. And then you look in real life and it just kind of looks like this strange spaghetti mess. Uh, you're not quite sure uh, in the book if something lies on top of something else or behind something. Uh, whereas in a 3D atlas, you can take a look and kind of see everything as it, uh, uh, as it appears in real life, more or less. Uh, now, there are some things that you're just going to have to memorize. There's some key relationships that are never going to go away when it comes to exams, right? Uh, for example, the phrenic nerve exits between the middle and the anterior scalene muscle. That's classic. You got you to gotta memorize that and you, you're always going to be asked about it. Um, but of course, you will, uh, you'll have a, uh, you'll have a much easier time if you use those 3D atlases versus the paper ones. Uh, photo atlases, also pretty good. Uh, anything that will, especially when it comes to preparing you for like real life whole exams. Uh, I know not every school is doing them now during the pandemic, but pin exams are a classic way to test students in anatomy and uh, seeing those pins in photo atlases can be really useful as well. And now the third thing that we want to talk about here are question banks. Uh, there are so many different question banks you can use these days. Uh, the most popular, popular of which being UWorld. Uh, Kaplan is also quite useful. Uh, people use Lectorio, NBMEs, USMLE RX, uh, and the free 120 as well as a classic. Uh, these things are like, you know, uh, when you first come into med school and the seniors that graduate hand down their big folder of old hastily written down notes and uh, memorized questions from previous exams. Uh, this is like that, but on a massive scale, uh, especially nowadays when you have, uh, you know, built-in videos or, for example, questions, uh, you know, you answer a question wrong and they give you like a, you know, four-page explanation as to where you went wrong. Uh, this can be really, really useful. Uh, another thing is just how well these things emulate the test them itself, right? Uh, uh, I know for myself, I did a ton of UWorld in my step one preparation. And when I went in to take the actual test, I mean, don't get me wrong, I was pretty nervous, but uh, it really just felt like sitting down and doing a eight blocks of UWorld back to back, which is, uh, it's, it's really something, you know, familiarity, uh, having that kind of takes one of the variables out of the equation, which is really nice. I can definitely recommend that from my own experience as well. So, um, I, having gone through my three most important digital resources, uh, I'd like to open it up to any questions that you guys have. Um, if you guys have any, just toss them in the chat now and I'll be more than willing to answer anything you got. Um, I've been studying pediatric nursing for an RN and I was wondering, does Pygmonic add new things every day? So, uh, Having personally worked with them for a while, I know that every single day I go in and I uh, either make edits to existing content or I work on new content with uh, some of our great scholars and artists and uh, some of our great voice actors too. So we are, we are constantly updating and constantly checking, doing 
uh, looking back on things we've already created and saying, okay, has something changed? Do we need to update this for 2021? Is there some new studies, some new research? Uh, so yeah, I would say new stuff is coming all the time, all the time. How early did I start studying for step two, for step one, asked Michelle. Um, so uh, I'm an IMG, so I, I'm currently uh, a Poland. And I knew uh, that my school didn't necessarily prepare me as well uh, as maybe some American schools for step one. So I knew I had to get the jump on it. Um, I started studying about a year ahead, uh, about a year in advance for my exam. Oh, you're an IMG as well. Great. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, we're in the same boat, honestly. Uh, yeah, so I started a year in advance. I started with, uh, with Anki. Uh, I basically just downloaded the biggest deck I could find and try to do as many questions as possible. Um, learning subjects basically from the ground up all over again, you know, because it's, I'm sure this happens in American schools too, where, you know, your professors expect you to learn one thing and the board exam wants you to learn something else doesn't always uh, doesn't always line up as well as you would hope it would. So you have to learn things specifically for the time. So I, uh, so yeah, I started about a year in advance with a bunch of Anki. Um, and then in my dedicated study, I started integrating other resources as well, such as Picmonic and Boards and Beyond, as well as UWorld. Uh, and then I did that for about three months before taking the test. Uh, and I felt really well prepared, honestly, by that point. And then how do you recommend we review for the transition into clinicals after the break from step one? I know this is to prepare for step one and step two, but what would you recommend for step three with regards to books or question banks and Anki? Um, so for the first part of the question, I would, uh, so after step one, the first step, I would give yourself a pat on the back. Honestly, like uh, I know for, for myself, I needed to take a little bit of time um, and just kind of hang out because it's so high pressure and it's so, you know, it's so extreme. You need to take like just a little bit of time to decompress, to allow yourself to relax and say, okay, you know, and I just did something huge that's going to have an impact on basically the rest of my life. Uh, I deserve a few weeks off. Uh, so that, that's the first thing I would do. And then the second thing, uh, when it comes to reviewing for clinicals, um, I would take a look at your, uh, take a look at your school and kind of what they expect of you. See if you have like course syllabi um, and like books available uh, that you can uh, kind of peruse. And then I would, take, I would take a look at those, see what your most important courses are going to be. Um, and honestly, after step one, especially having got your score, I would start thinking about specialization uh, and then kind of focusing your study in that direction. Don't get me wrong. You got to learn a little bit of everything, but uh, you should really focus on uh, what you think you want to do in the future, right? Uh, and then regarding step three, I actually I don't feel that I'm exactly the person to talk to about that. I haven't actually started yet. Uh, so I don't want to give you any incorrect information. Um, so does Bigmonic spaced repetition work as well as Anki? I would say, yeah, I would say uh, if we based our system off of, you know, the, that kind of same spaced repetition, which has been clinically proven to do, uh, you know, to increase your memorization ability, which is, you know, kind of incredible. When you think about it, kind of, it's, it's a bit like a brain hack, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah, I would say, yeah. Uh, oh, you're, you're very welcome. All right. Uh, do we have any other questions? So, uh, what is the best way to use Picmonic in your experience? Um, I would use it alongside your normal studying, uh, your normal studying routines, like for your clinicals, right? So if you have like a rotation in surgery coming up, I would take a look at all of our surgical content and kind of start from, uh, start from the beginning and kind of go through. And uh, I, I wouldn't, I, I think 
a lot of people kind of can fall into a trap of watching something one time and thinking they got it. I would like, uh, what really helps me is I'll watch the video all the way through and then I'll kind of close my eyes, take a step back and say, okay, try to reassemble the picture in your head, right? Okay, over here, you know, you have the pill and over here you have, um, you know, all, all the different characters. Uh, and that can really help you uh, kind of put those, you know, it, it tra- makes the transition from passive learning into active learning, which I think is super, super useful. Uh, and then go over the Anki plug one more time. Yeah, so uh, the way the Anki plugin works, it's it's totally free uh, and super, super easy to use. You, If you have Anki installed, um, you go to the, uh, you go to, we have a link on our website, actually, if uh, someone could paste that in the chat. Uh, you basically go into Anki and you, uh, there's this code that you can copy down from the link and then you paste it into your Anki. And anytime you open one of your cards that contains one of these keywords, uh, for example, it, it recognizes diseases, it recognizes uh, symptoms, certain drugs, like uh, biochemical compounds, uh, cell types, it'll then link you, like you just hover over it and it links you to a, uh, it links you to a pigmonic about the subject, right? And so from that little, you know, it'll open in a small window, you can see a list of facts that are associated with that disease, you know, whether it is the symptoms of a disease or the pathophysiology or the, uh, indications for a particular drug, as well as a link, uh, our pigmonic website where you can watch the video. Uh, which is super, super useful. Uh, and that is basically how that works. I hope I answered your question with that. Um, okay, number one, can you replace Anki with Picmonic? Um, I would, so that I'm not totally sure on. Uh, I've never, I, I think for me, I think the best way to, uh, I think the best way to study and the best way to absorb this information Um, you know, because we are presented with such an incredible amount of information as med and nursing students, Uh, to kind of combine everything, you know, take, pick uh, certain things from uh, certain resources and kind of combine it all together into one big package. I would, uh, and a lot of it depends on you as well. Like I know for me, I'm such a flashcard nerd. Like it just works so well for me that, you know, I would, uh, I lean on Anki most and then I have Picmonic like as well, like I kind of use them together, but some people may find uh, may find that one or the other like works better. Or, uh, but yeah, I would uh, I would experiment with that uh, and kind of see what works best for you. And then number two, can you compare Picmonic to Sketchy? Thanks for your time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, I've been asked this question a lot. So Picmonic the uh, the format is like more small videos, right? You want to uh, have something no longer than like five minutes or so, like just really digestible pieces of information. Um, you know, so you'll have one picmonic about like uh, the diagnosis and pathophysiology of a disease, and then one picmonic about the treatment. Uh, whereas in Sketchy, they really uh, kind of lump it all together into one big like video, right? So you'll sit down, you'll watch like a 30 minute video about, uh, you know, Staph aureus or, or, you know, or whatever. So I think for people who want like kind of the all in one, like kind of the, uh, you know, sit down for like a marathon, uh, then sketchy will work for them a little bit better. But for people who are more like, okay, let me get this piece of information, digest it. Let me get this new piece of information, digest it. Uh, Picmonic would work. Uh, so I would, I honestly, I would, I would experiment, I would experiment and, you know, who knows, maybe you'll be the our lucky winner of uh, one free year of uh, subscription. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Johnny, no problem. All right, any other questions? All right, so with no more questions, uh, bear in mind, a recording of this will uh, be available tomorrow morning, uh, basically as soon as possible. Uh, basically, oh, one more question came through. Will last fail change for IMGs? Uh, so 
the, this is kind of a this is kind of a tough topic. Uh, I think it can go two ways, right? As an IMG, you we <laughs> need pretty much every advantage we can get to get a residency in the states, right? And having a three-digit score that's really really good, you know, like significantly above average, will really really help you. Uh, but changing that to just a pass kind of removes that ability uh, for IMGs to differentiate themselves from the crowd, which is, which is rough, you know, like uh, it kind of, the pass fail change kind of took that away from us. So I would recommend if you, if you, uh, you know, if you're in the position where you could feasibly take step one before 2022, I would do it, you know, I wouldn't rush it, you know, because a fail is, looks really, really bad on, uh, on your resume and on your application. But if you can feasibly do it uh, before 2022 and get a good score, I would, I would try to go for it because uh, a really good three-digit three digit score is uh, going to look better than a pass every single time. Uh, and so I hope that that uh, answers all of your questions. And with that, uh, the webinar will be available as a free recording on YouTube tomorrow morning. All of you who RSVP'd will get a link to it as well. And now, uh, the moment you've all been waiting for, we are going to announce the winner. So congratulations to Catherine Taylor. Uh, so I'll throw some clapping hands in her for the chat, Catherine. The team is going to reach out to you real soon and uh, get your uh, get your contact information, make sure we get that to you. Uh, we'll send you an email as well. And for the rest of you, uh, don't think I left you out. Uh, you're all going to get 30% off Picmonic if you subscribe within the next 24 hours. Uh, there's going to be a link in the chat here for all of you. Uh, and you'll also receive the same link to your email, the email that you RSVP'd with. So uh, subscribe within 24 hours for 30% off. And with that, I'd like to thank all of you for attending. I really appreciate you taking the time to come down and listen to what I have to say. And I really hope that what I said was useful for you. Have a great day. See ya.